So the next mind set is next is not in sequence. The next mind set I am discussing is self doubt. Self doubt. And that is your lowest score. <laughs> Great. Great. Because that's a, like centricity and conformity, that's a very critical mindset. Okay. By the name self doubt itself, you know. With all your achievements and all that, if you are self doubt, then finish. Sorry, doctor. With all your achievements and awards and recognitions, mm -hmm. if you have self doubt secretly, then you will have problems now or later. Mm -hmm. By the way, all these mindsets are very critical for later life. A CEO or a vice president or a rich man with all the blocks are functioning efficiently and uh, no problem. But one day he will be out of the business, you know. That is true. And yeah. most of the time, the business people will never be out of business. They will be always doing something or the other in the company so that they can manage. But employed people, one day they will have to return. Yeah. Then they and their self <laughs> only are there. <laughs> their wives are not with them, their children are not with them. They and their self in a lonely corner of a house. Yes. Finished. Whether they live for six months or six years, that's a very, very, very tricky side actually. They only know how they suffer. Only they know. That's why most of the elderly people today are very irritated, dull minds. Mm -hmm. I remember in the past when we were all young, the Muttasham, the grandfather is supposed to be the, a world of wisdom and understanding, love and care. Now people just want to avoid them. As a researcher, I have not come across in the modern times in the last 10 12 years, I have not come across even a single case of um, family situation where the so-called grandfather is revered and respected and loved. They will be shown. <laughs> the last incident was one of my trainees took him, took me to his house. Mm -hmm. So in the front veranda, the so-called grandfather was lying on a well, called easy chair. I asked him, shall we meet him and talk to him and I answered to him, I asked questions, etc. Et uh, about five minutes, ten minutes, he was very interested in talking and then the, my friend was calling from inside. <laughs> and giving actions that to stop the care that old man there. Uh, <laughs> That's the and he was talking about him. He was a retired principal of a college, a big guy, etc. etc. That's why I talked to him also, even otherwise. Mm. So, at that time, that's why Krivati evolution is essential. And this is what even so called Creativity researchers, even in the United States, which is supposed to be a mechanical world view, when they are insisting that everybody should try to achieve that creative evolution of the mind, instead of becoming slaves to so called gurus and uh, religions and all that, it was, it was published in a journal, it was written by an article by a well known creativity researcher by name Sidney J. Pons. I have that, I had that copy but it is missing. But uh, I have just a PowerPoint uh, uh, note where that particular paragraph is there. From the, you can be one of that. Why not? Yes, like, uh, like uh, when Edmund Hillary was asked, he, you, do you think he wanted to climb Mount Everest because he wanted to be known throughout the world? Nothing. 
He said the worst is there, why not I claim? That's all. For which he has been preparing for some 25 years. Actually, he was climbing the Everest with him. There is a line from his book, I remember. He was telling to a group of mountaineering aspirants, I am just an ordinary person only. Do not think that I am some superhuman. At 3000 feet height, my heart also was trembling with fear. But I just took the next step. Yes, sir. Try for that extraordinary. Sure, doctor. Think about so-called Christopher Columbus, the guy who reportedly discovered the tip of United States. You know, he was already a mariner, an experienced genius. And he felt that there could be other lands. And uh, all his colleagues, he said to him, no, 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 impossible. Anyway, you are all efficient mariners, my experts in managing the ship, why don't you come? He said, no, 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 you are not ready to travel to that uncertainty and ambiguity and unknown. Then he went and talked to the king. Kings were really kings at that time, you know, not like the modern leaders of the nations, political leaders. Most of the kings were people of wisdom and understanding. So the king got an idea, he could be true. Then what way to help him? He said, okay, go to the jails and pick up whatever number of people who are really healthy. They are already in the jails. Okay. And about 95 criminals, convicted criminals, chained on to the ship. They were mm, uh, uh, sailing the ship. Okay. And just imagine that man, okay, journeying alone in the company of 95 criminals <laughs> to an unknown, unknown. location. Yes. That is called originality. So as I told you by that book, Zen and Japanese culture, first, read it thoroughly. develop that Zen mind of that Zen self of no doubt. You are already a person with a minimum self-doubt. That's good. That's because you have worked so hard. Like Christopher Columbus, you travelled alone through the tragedies of your life for some 15, 18 long years and did everything and discovered everything by yourself, found out what to do by yourself and tried to live what you found. That's the only, only one mindset out of the seven, that's the only one that is really long. Despite having a fear and tension about facing the unknown and the uncertain and the unexpected and the strange and the ambiguous, despite having severe simplicity and conformity, you manage life because of your absolute confidence in yourself. There are higher levels of confidence, like uh, uh, that of a Zen master. Mm. Yeah. 
So be a Zen master. Also, that's what I want you to be ultimately. Then you train the yoga. Okay. You should have cleverly identified posters stuck on the walls in PowerPoint presentations and then do a real training program for the aspirants of yoga. That is your brand, brand positioning, branding it is called in management. Every guru has a brand, you know. Sri Sri Ravishankar has his own method, his own brand name. And uh, what to call it, name, what to call it, the art of living, something like that. Yeah. Then Yagi was the what to call it, Isha Yoga, yes. Inner Engineering and all. I told you both of them were the disciples of another great master called the Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. He is the first one in India to travel abroad and popularize yoga. Nobody now remembers him. Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. He was also called the Flying Swan. He had his own private jet. He really single mindedly and single handedly introduced yoga and made it acceptable to the youth. It will be the first one. Therefore, other people also and all these modern people could go to US because of the image about yoga and the Indian ancient Bharata culture propagated there by the single man by name Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. And he had his branding also called Transcendental Meditation. What he used is he used the advanced science and technology to prove the effect of, for example, pranayama on the body. By advanced uh, 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 digital electronic equipments, electrodes would be connected into the body and uh, a disciple would sit in pranayama and uh, it will be shown. There are some 20, 30 different wave patterns developed or derived by various parts of the brain, alpha wave, delta wave, gamma wave, these are the names going to that. So certain certain wave, let us say alpha wave, in normal resting condition, in disturbed condition, how it is. And then a disturbed condition, alpha wave, and that person is sitting and doing pranayama in five minutes, ten minutes, that curve becomes that curve becomes simple and normal. This way he proved to the scientific mechanical mindset of the United States that yoga is great. And he named it a transcendental meditation. Meditation which will help you transcend your ordinary mind. This Jaggi was the one Sri Sri Ravishanga were his disciples. There were many of course by the way, almost 90% of his disciples, uh, whose disciple, Moshi Mahesh highly educated university professors with a doctorate in physics and literature and uh, chemistry and economics and all that. And they resigned their jobs and went out to various countries to propagate the transcendental meditation. That much was his influence on those people. Like also, he did not amass the wealth somewhere. He used most of his wealth to give money to these people, highly educated people. They were given uh, maybe a little more salary or remuneration than what they used to get from the university or from their working place. And they went around all parts of the world. They came, in fact, they only made transcendental meditation popular in India, not Mahesh Yogi. So out of him, his various disciples in India, this Jiggy was there and uh, Ravi Shankar and there was a lady in Mumbai also. Mm -hmm. These three started down their own. As I told you something back, that lady was apparently murdered yeah. by a rival. They have a great lot of rivals, you know. There's the problem with India. If somebody becomes prominent in some way, then their country will try to defeat that person. Unlike in any other country. That's what is happening in Indian institutions and organizations also. Because of the mindsets of uh, certain blocks which we are to discuss. 
Next blow called the, what you call the fear of law in a cellular WNSS or fear of humiliation or fear of law. Okay. When, when Jaggi was there, they become famous and influential. A lot of similar people or even unrelated people develop with jealousy and hatred and uh, some kind of an animosity to him for no reason. That is the tragedy of the so called Ahambrahmasmi country. India is the only one country where its own genius was never accepted. All the celebrated wonderful guys in India, like Ravindra Tagore, now India is celebrating. He was identified by the Britishers and gave him the third title, Ramanujam. I was identified by some American professor, even great films, identified by the Western mind. Osho, or even Vivekananda, he is known after his give, talk given to the universal whatever in the US. Yes. Till then he has not talked about much. That's why most of these people go, want to go to US. Even from Alandra there is a Swami in the US. Ah. His brother is still here running a shop, a grocery shop or some fancy shop. I would say uh, almost uh, 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 an exaggeration, 90% of that kind of people in India, they are all in the US yes. or France or Germany or England or somewhere. Because they don't get acceptance in India. For acceptance, forget it. The society nearby will try to kill him. The very so-called very Hindus will go against them. That's the tragedy of India. That's why I appreciate this Ravi Shankar and Jiggy was their master, master thieves. Because they have survived. survived. And now, that is the India. That is again the third world mindset of India. When you are becoming prominent, they will try their best to put you down. And despite that, if you grow, they will touch your feet and drink your urine. That's also India. Because of the winter blows. In companies also, in organizations, including private organizations, government organizations, of course, if you are wonderful, you will be put down, even now. Even now. I was to interview APJ Kalam. Yeah. <coughs> And I went to Sri Harikota, that place, and they said you cannot meet him. Somebody is telling me. I was a doctoral student, you know, I was very young at that time. And I am not a, a dominating kind of a guy. If I want to do, I will do. That's a different issue. But that I did as a part of my research, not my research, it was a research undertaken by Harvard University. Mm -hmm. They only suggested, I never heard about him. They suggested his name. <laughs> and some senior scientists and other people, they said, I heard them, why do you want to interview him? Who told you? I said, Harvard, which Harvard? They were all, uh, in uh, half an hour, they were almost uh, asking me to get out. They did not say that. But at that time, I did not realize. Later, I realized he was definitely a top guy. And the other scientists, they never wanted me to interview him. That is this. A goddamned country called India now. That's why all the politicians in India are wonderful people than politicians in any other country. Yeah, very, very. I have interviewed some politicians also. Supreme geniuses, including a local political leader, I am telling you. Because that much opposition they had. Still they survive. Mm -hmm. Despite all that, they manage their position. Wonderful. I am not concerned about uh, whatever uh, uh, corruption etc. I am talking about the ability of that person, the competency yes. of that uh, political leaders. Wonderful. Great people. In the West, Donald Trump is somewhat like that. 
not Obama and all. The Chinese president and the other, they rule by sheer military force, not because of their anything. They are criminals. But uh, Indian political leaders are absolutely creative. And that's why you see, have you noticed most of the politicians live beyond 70, 75, 80? <laughs> you see? They may have many, many health problems because they are so confident, their trust in them is so bloody deep. Yeah. Right now, one of the top political leaders in Kerala state, who was also the chief minister by name V. S. Sachidanandan, just three days back, his 101. First birthday was celebrated. Hundred and one. A so-called politician facing conflicts and the turmoils and criticisms and newspaper damaging uh, attempts and all that. Okay? Do you think their life is easy? Very, very tough. Their day starts maybe around three o'clock, four o'clock every day. And they sleep definitely not before twelve o'clock. And every day they would be meeting so many people from a Russia driver to the local political leaders to the other leaders and managing issues and conflicts without exception of a single day. And they don't have much illness and most of them live long, about 70, 80. Because of their self-trust. Because they cannot afford to say, I don't know, I didn't have sleep, I have headache, I have stomachache and all that. They don't even notice it. And they are definitely eccentrics and non-conformists. Mm. Most of them are not at all academically good. They are not really so-called good boys. They started the beginning even in the high school process. What is the genius of Narendra Modi, which we discussed? Born in the poorest of the poor family. Watos is the only one national leader who went around all the countries, not even the president of US. He just, in the beginning, you remember, first time. He went to all the countries. He only has given earned a name for India, the world. He went and met the presidents and prime ministers of almost all major countries within about one year time without even having proper English language. Yeah. What is his level of self? Absolutely zero self doubt. Fear of fear and anxiety about the unknown and the ambiguous and the uncertain and the unexpected. Very low centricity and conformity. He violated all the things. That's why he could think about uh, mm. having toilets all around and uh, mm. many, 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 many unique things. Okay. Uh, most of them could be failures or politically wrong, I don't care. But what he did, they were very daring decisions. Demonetization is not no. an <laughs> easy task. So, so don't.
vast majority of people have their self confidence based on the vast majority of people have low self doubt only yeah that's the duty that's the paradox because their self is based on their education i am not i am telling great majority of educated people who did the pradeep kandwar test for most of them the lowest score was self doubt only okay yeah <coughs> but not as low as that of yours but among all the other scores if you look at the pattern of scores as in a graph graph paper in you know, a graph relatively low score was mostly the self doubt that's because of their education because of their job position their value of self is based on their education and i am the manager i am senior manager or ias person or ips or if it's a self if professional background or educational background is less uh do you think doctor the self doubt will be more no in fact it is very personal thing no yeah, yeah. that's a beautiful question if the education is very low again there's no self doubt mm. because there is not much knowing so there is no self doubt it is something you are ready to explore and achieve something so no, for no, that no, you no, need no, the no. confidence no we are not talking about our majority of people are not exploring or anything hmm. they are exploring what exploring what in itself majority of people no 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 i said majority of people have low self doubt because they are uneducated this is a statement like uh, where the angels there the fools send up Can you repeat on again please where the angels dare that means when even when angels are little bit scared to enter mm. wherever the fools will enter but they are fools they don't care they don't know yeah okay got it so <laughs> most of the time you will be surprised that uneducated illiterate rural people are more confident than educated people mm. yeah. they don't have anything to lose you know. they don't care they will go anywhere in general not to a government officer anywhere but so some doubt it's a very complex uh, mindset mm. a highly educated person can have more self doubt than the less educated person reason because highly educated person is aware of many 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 constraints and restraints in the environment for example a chief secretary will have a, a slight show to them and to enter the room of the chief minister or the prime minister but an ordinary pure or a driver will school enter yeah. for example and here also i have noticed that Yeah, all these villages are very cool to interact with you. but uh, educated uh, uh, aristocratic people are down they are all little bit uh, respectful and keep a distance okay. these people don't keep a distance but they are not concerned about all this that's one reason why these people are not accepted by the other people also so so doubt is a unique variable so uh, this mindset is not just assess then the result you know it is always used for discussion only that's why my data is very valid it is not just a question of administration and taking the results and go and uh, do statistical analysis for phd no my data was collected during a period of 2 to 3 days of rigorous training program therefore i could validate and i get all the scores and i am constantly monitoring how they perform in the training or so no always there is a strong correlation between what they do in the questionnaire and what they talk or behave in the training programs but in general 
most of the time there will be a, a, a personal discussion session after the training day, a third day. There is somebody who feels my data is not correct, my blocks are there, I want to have, resolve it and all that. That cannot be done in a two-day training program. So that will be a separate session for them. Then one after the other they will come with somebody one hour, two hour, not more than that time is possible. But I will do something in that one hour, but minimum one hour. So that is the real way uh, this test should be conducted and uh, carried like we are doing now. Also, if you have no self-doubt, that's why I started with your I told in the very beginning that your self-doubt score is low because of what I told you. Because you have, you have travelled your journey in turbulent waters, that is why. Your lack of self-doubt is not based on wisdom and understanding. But by practical experiencing of managing the tragedies of life, Each score has to be discussed like that, like in handwriting analysis, we can identify and almost 90% of the hidden inner variables, seek even the secrets of that person. Yes. That much powerful is handwriting analysis. But it is always to be used as a tool for counseling and training. For example, this is your problem. Do you agree? He will have to agree. So, resolve it. Similarly, this also. So your self-doubt is definitely meaning, I mean, low self-doubt is definitely meaningful, but that is from this. But when you want to address an audience about uh, what is yoga and what is the philosophy of yoga, then you will know that you are, you are not able to do that. Yes. Because we don't have the sufficient yeah. knowledge that's about right, it to right. talk. Even when you develop your reading, Okay, let us say you read about all these things for about five years, even then, in the beginnings, many days you will have self-doubt. Hundred people will ask hundred different views of questions. Even one person can ask you questions and yeah. even if nobody is asking questions, you will have your own secret doubt. Will I be able to clarify my concepts clearly? Mm -hmm. In fact, that lady, the other yeah. day, in, in the morning of that day, Standing in that corner, she only told me that uh, I am suffering a, a lot of tension before every program, every training program. She only told me. And she also explained why. Because her background is chartered accountants accounting something. And she is doing training programming, uh, what you call, he is so called a life coach. Basically psychology and uh, deeper aspects of creativity and all that. And she has read some books, that's all. Yeah. So she openly told me that every time before a training program for about three to four days I could not sleep. And her husband told me there's a program, at least for one week she will be in her room with closed doors and reading books and writing notes and taking notes every time. That's why I told you so strongly. Don't go like that. Be completely confident. In that sense only I should do not be a half coach. And she, why should she be so hurry in doing um, to make money? She is extremely rich. So she can take two more years of time and develop it thoroughly and um, be completely you know, flying with her understanding. Develop 1000% understanding in order to talk 10% to the audience. That's my advantage, you know. I have covered all the Upanishads and Vedas of India, all the classics of India, even at the young age of 24, before that. Then I have myself read and understood the entire philosophies of the West on mind and matter and existence. Then came to Tibetan Yoga and the Chinese Tao and then finally the Zen of Japan. 
plus my background in poetry and short story and film making and music and musical instruments and uh, uh, repairing electrical equipments and uh, um, uh, rank in my subjects and things like that. I do not know any other trainer in the world with this kind of varied background. Okay, Jackie was there. He cannot sing. He cannot play a musical instrument. He cannot write a short story. He doesn't know calligraphy. He doesn't know handwriting analysis. He doesn't know how to make a resonance. I can talk whatever he talks in a much better than the him and I do all these things also. My trainees told me that I talk uh, uh, much, much greater things than all these people. That is for sure. They may be also uh, capable of talking, but uh, there won't be much audience to listen to the way I talk, I mean, the level with which I talk. Everybody cannot be on top of Everest. I am doing an Everest climbing program. Not walking around the Mount Everest and sightseeing and taking photographs, no. Reach the peak. Yeah. So I have reached the peak and covered and gone much beyond that. Therefore, if at all I can talk, I want to talk about that only. That is it. can dance. My dance is in the YouTube. I have dressed like a female and put my photo in the Facebook. When tens of thousands of students and teachers know me, managers know me, I have put my photograph wearing a sari. It is in the Facebook. With the full tadi and all that. I don't want to shave and dress how I have do like a female and all that. I can wear a sari in five minutes, very well. I have done that. I have dressed up in sari and walked in MG Road, Karnavu. I would do that. These people cannot do that, okay? Yeah. So, I am just giving about mindsets. Because I do all these things, I am talking about me. In some of the training programs, they write, they will come in. He talks about himself. He, he, he brags about himself, etc. Because Indians, you know, they cannot accept somebody talking so straight about them. That's why I am wonderful. Because they don't have it and they don't have the guts to do that. And other people like me, they will quote the example of other creativity trainers, they quote the example of Albert Einstein or Devinaya Tagore or Thomas Edison or somebody. I can do it much better than them. I have unless they by me. If I talk an example, I will talk about Jesus and Buddha and Krishna or about me. Because I do that. There's an item in the question. Men shall not dress like women and women shall not dress like men. You know, when I analyze the data, almost 90% of the females say disagree. That means men can dress like women. And almost 90% of the men say no. Men are so scared. I realize that. The so-called man who is so obsessed about the sexuality of the female, she cannot even touch a sari. For him, sari means sexual, sexual. Sari is something that covers uh, his most uh, obsessed object. In my school for creative perspective office, most of the days I sat in sari only. Yeah. When visitors come, that is also part of my research. Okay? Every man who entered the office, at least 200 letters or so, for a period of three years, 
all of them will be surprised and entering the room will stand soaked uh, and they ask if they want to go back. And I smile at them and come on, come on, sit. With a lot of hesitation they look here and there. And somehow they sit there and they cannot look at me. Whereas, not even a single female did so anything unexpected at all. On the other hand, at least 70% of them appreciated me, so you look so nice in this very. That's the beauty. What man? I don't look, I don't have any element of feminineness in my body or face. It's a full tadi and uh, muscles. Even then they did not feel any uh, ambiguity in them, females. For some of the men got so irritated. And they even implied that I have some mental problem. Yes. Even some of the stupid academic psychologists in the past, recording, right? Yes. Those idiots, I would say, in clinical psychology, they have labeled the tendency of man to wear a female dress as a mental disorder called transvestism. West meaning dress, trans meaning of the opposite sex. Those stupid American male chauvinistic mindsets, they thought that wearing a female dress is a mental problem. Strange, you know, eccentricity. Eccentricity is a mental problem, even now. But in modern textbooks, it is not there. I'm talking about uh, clinical psychology books uh, existed in some 1950s and all that. And they are those idiots, those idiotic researchers in psychology, they did not look at the 90% of the females so boldly wearing a man's dress. Okay? That is no transvestism. Those men who are neurotically obsessed about looking at a female only as a sexual object, they felt funny and irritated and disturbed about males dressing like females and they said it is a mental problem. And then number of females wearing typical four-piece suit and shoes of the man, yes, no, oh, no, a mental problem. Okay? Yeah. I'm talking in between about uh, the self-doubt element only. These are all connected with self. When those few men who came to my office and saw me sitting in sari, their self got troubled seeing me in sari. And worn very neatly, very beautifully draped. If I do a thing, I will do it completely. And my body is very shaved, you know. Even if they try, most of the men have very ugly bodies, okay. Very few men have really good body, shape I mean. By that reason they cannot do it, that's a different issue. So it suits so well to my body and the way I wear it and so they got so disturbed because their self could not tolerate me sitting there like this because that sari is always a sexual image they could not manage their self The females were no problem. Because the females do not get stimulated by looking even at the naked body of a man. Yeah. 
like the idiotic men get completely absolutely toppled by see not even the naked body even the fully dressed body they feel sexuality Anyway, that's the program of the world, so that the society continues. That's a different issue, which we have discussed already. So I'm talking about self-doubt. Only two, three men had the confidence to, ah, hi, Sundar, oh, hey, yes, and came and talked to me. And they were all highly evolved people of wisdom and understanding. So, see the difference? Yeah. The ordinary men got troubled. Was really wonderful people. Most of them, otherwise they would not come to my office. You know. Ordinary people would not even enter my office because the board was no name of office or anything. The board carried only one sentence. A beautiful big board. What you call it? genius is a choice. That's all. I want only those few, one of one, ten thousand, who, oh, what is this statement? Let me go and see. I want only those people to enter my office. A great lot of my friends, because <laughs> I have been living in absolute poverty in those days. They said, why don't you start some personality development training? You can do it at a masterly level. So that you will get, you will be the most popular person. Because there will be a crowd of people. Because there were other people doing personality development programs. The 300 people and older, making, mending money, that's what you say. I said, I will not do that. I have greater things to do. At those times I got only one meal in three days. Just a kitchen, that's all. Even then I was not ready. So, I mean, anyway, that's all so, uh, related topics. I am bragging about this at all. And I am so proud about that because when I analyze the biography of most of the highly creative people, they also live like that only. Really. Going by their convictions. They have no doubt in their self to do what they wanted to do. So the supreme most genius, the technological genius in the world is still un, not well, not that well known. His name is Nikola Tesla. He only invented electricity without which the entire world will not work the way it does today. Okay? This alternating current electricity, Nikola Tesla. And he got so, he was a super genius. He got so fed up with the society. And he, had, he went and stayed in a room, far remote somewhere. All the details are there. I don't remember this place. And he had no money. And he simply stayed in that room. And starving, 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 he died. Nikola Tesla. Yeah. And the people opened the room, he was just sitting on the bed like this, dead. So lean, like a skeleton. So, that is called a self So, uh, the evidence of your real lack of self-doubt, now in your, in your life you are really, really confident. Your low self-doubt is in living. You have found out a way, the other day you said proudly that I discovered that I can do yoga. You learned it and you are doing it and you are training your people. Good, wonderful. Now you have to test, you have to test your absolute uh, uh, Power of self by learning all the possible details, all the scaffolding and philosophy and methodology about that. There you should have no self-doubt. 
You should be able to give training in yoga to anybody in the world, including world leaders, without a shake. You know, most people, especially in India, if they come across a big person, he will start shivering. Especially in India. Doctor, one minute.